Hey everybody, so I bought this mold a long time ago um, and it's an annular pot melt from Laurie Spray at Bonnie Dune Glass. And uh, I thought I would just show this to you as I was attempting to do a project. Now she doesn't have any of these for sale right now, but just follow her. You never know when she might make some more. Uh, you could also try to drill out some holes in maybe a clay pot or something, or a clay, a clay saucer, uh, like a flower pot saucer, in order to try to get the same effect. But what happens is you put scrap glass in above and then it drips down into uh, the floor below. And so I've got a 12 inch stainless steel ring and it's lined with fiber paper uh, that's also already pre-measured to an inch tall. Uh, both of those are from Laurie at Bonnie Dune. And then I've put a piece of clear Tecta in uh, and there's fiber paper underneath that. Now, when I was cl cutting this circle, I broke it, but that's okay because it's all gonna become one big giant melt anyway. So this is a good way to continue to use that scrap Tecta or that, that cl uh, clear Tecta circle and not th throw it in the scrap bin. Um, you know, this, the circle was a little rough around the edges uh, but that's okay because again, it's all going to become one big melt uh, in the hot kiln. So my setup, I've got kiln posts and then I had an old kiln shelf that I cut up and so that it creates a bridge piece that straddles those two and then this piece uh, sets on top and so the glass will drip down. You fill the top with scrap, it'll drip down through and I don't think I'm at risk of having any of my glass touch the sides so it looks all clear there. I'm going to go ahead and fill this thing up with scrap glass and then we'll get it going. Okay, so I'm back here at my um, workbench here and I'm going to start to fill this thing up with glass. So I have weighed the base piece, the base circle of glass that I had back in the, in the um, uh, kiln. And that base piece of glass was 19 ounces. And Laurie's uh, tutorial on this, which is super simple to follow, says, um, you know, just take that base piece, if you're using a base piece of glass, and weigh it out, and then multiply it times two or three for kind of however big you want your, your thickness of your piece to be. I'm going to shoot for three times that, because I do know that there's going to be a fair amount of glass that stays in here and doesn't come all the way through. So, um, I'm going to shoot for about, um, let's say, 40 ounces of glass in my melt here, uh, and then we'll see how much comes out. I plan on weighing this before in advance and then after so that I can calculate how much glass was remaining, and that'll help me with future scrap melts. So um, this uh, ceramic piece, this uh, ring mold here, is exactly 60 ounces. So if it's 60, and I'm shooting for, uh, you know, to add 40 ounces of glass. I'll weigh this as I go up to 100, and then I'll be done. I'm going to fill it with this a bunch of scrap that I got actually used from somebody. And I'm kind of going to do a little bit of an ombre effect, I think. So I don't know what, I don't know the specific names of these colors. This is all bullseye glass. I'm, I'm assuming this is a turquoise and a light turquoise. This might even be a, a tint of some sort. And then a couple of different blues. Um, so I'm going to do these uh, in... A row here and I'm gonna put quite a bit of clear in with it and then uh, we'll get up to 40 ounces and we'll fire this thing and see what happens. Okay, here we are. As you can see, I filled that thing up. I uh, went just a little bit above my 100, 100.5. By the way, I love this scale because I can just move it around. It's super big. It's good for postage. It's good for weighing glass. Uh, anyway, so um, I put in the colored glass and then you saw that I filled it up with lots of clear. I did this for two reasons. One, I've got the clear base that's in the kiln, then the color will drip first, and then I'd love to have a nice clear cap on that color and kind of trap that color in the middle. Uh, we'll see if it works that way, but I just love the depth that you can get um, when you have color uh, capped off with clear, and so we'll see if that works. The other reason why I did this is because I know that there's going to be some glass that's left in the pot, and if possible, I would love to have most of the color run out. So by filling it with clear, I guess I'm kind of hoping that the clear is the last thing to stay in there and that most of the color goes first and that the clear goes last. So 
Anyway, uh, you saw me filling this up. I had a bunch of the scrap I told you about. I avoided using the rolled edges because I love bullseye rolled edges. And I kind of imagine this could be a wave piece someday. So I kept those because I thought that looked like waves and this colors are pretty. Uh, but I filled it with the dark cobalt blue, that kind of more medium blue. I don't know the names of these colors because I don't have any codes because it was all scrap. There's turquoise, what I think is light turquoise. Okay, here we go. Laurie wisely recommended that once you have your base piece of glass down to put a little piece of glue, or excuse me, a little piece of clear chip in the bottom, right in the center, so that when you place this, you can kind of figure out where center is. I did not do a piece of glass. I did etch a little bit um, with a diamond bit, and so you can kind of see that darker center, uh, but that's the way to try to center this the best. Uh, I also just did a lot, a lot of eyeballing it to kind of make sure that I feel good about it, and then I double checked underneath to make sure that none of the um, holes are being covered up by my kiln posts here. So I think I'm good to go. I'm going to fire this. I've never done this one, so this is a test. I'm going to use the firing schedule that Laurie recommends on her website. I'll post that in the video notes. As I'm thinking about this, I have plenty of room, so I may actually do a scrap melt or two in here during the same firing, too. Okay, I just opened it up, and here's the big reveal. Um, it is freezing here in Texas right now. <laughs> it's seven degrees, and we're doing rolling blackouts, so I'm going to unplug the kiln. I'm not sure when I'm going to get a chance to do this again, but I did get uh, the power. Uh, to last all the way through. And I learned an important lesson. There was a striker in there. Never would have guessed that. Uh, again, this was a big box of scrap that I bought from somebody. It was kind of a pale blue. Looks like it was a violet striker, but that's okay. It's kind of beautiful, actually. Works out well, I think, in the piece. It's not exactly the look I was going for. There's not a lot of color here at the far end, and I worried about that because it was a lighter tur turquoise that I was using. But all in all, I'm pretty pleased with this. I have one, you see that one tiny stringer hanging down. So um, I will have to break that off and refire this again uh, to smooth out that surface, but generally I'm happy. So stay tuned. And there is some, you know, glass that sticks in there and that's just what happens with these molds. Uh, that'll become part of the next, the next uh, scrap melt. So you might want to think about coordinating your colors a little bit. Uh, that's it. Let's uh, stay tuned for the next segment. Okay, believe it or not, all that video that I just showed you <laughs> was shot more than a year ago. Uh, it was in early February of 2021 when Dallas had our big, uh, or Texas had our big deep freeze and winter storm. Uh, when this piece came out, I just wasn't sure what to do with it. I put it to the side, and so you might be like me, have a lot of those projects. I finally dug it back out. There was just a little bit of uh, cold working that needed to be done on the end, I, I, or edge. I ground, used my grinder to clean up the edge just a little bit where there were some inconsistencies. And the top of this piece needed to be smoothed out a little bit, where there was that stringer piece, and then there's a, a bubble or two. But what I decided to do was actually flip it, and I'm gonna refire it. Now, the texture that you see here, I took a diamond pad to it, because it had just a, a, some imperfections on the bottom that I wanted to kind of clean up. So I took a diamond pad and just roughed up the whole bottom. I'm now gonna dust it with powder, and I'm gonna put it in the kiln on a good, long, slow, full fuse to see how much it spreads out because it is just a little thick and uh, and then hopefully get a nice shiny finish to this that then I can go ahead and slump into a bowl mold. Well heck so at first glance when I opened the kiln this looked really pretty. I'm pleased with the way um, it you know leveled out a little bit it spread out some but look can you see in the reflection there yeah check out this pattern. So what's interesting that I truly don't have an answer to, sorry about the glare of the lights, but you see what's happening there. I really, I don't, I don't think, I guess this could be considered devitrification, but here's the thing. So before I put this in, I sanded this whole back, uh, you know, this was the underside. I, I sanded this down and that's the pattern that appeared on the back after I sanded it, where some of the glass was just a little uneven from like the shelf texture, I guess. And so, and then I dusted it with clear and I truly thought, and in this case, I ended up taking this up to 1500 degrees. I truly thought that that clear powder 
would fuse in and that that pattern would have disappeared because it would just smooth out and be gone. And so I don't know what to think. I'm kind of I'm kind of stumped here because what I I guess what I'm going to attempt to do is clear powder again. What I don't know is if I should sand it again uh, with a diamond pad or if I should simply put clear powder and then do another full fuse. I won't take it up as high because there were other things in the load that needed to take it up to 1500. Um, so this time I would do kind of a normal standard full fuse in my kiln, which is probably more like 1475. Uh, I don't know. I'm just, I'm kind of stumped, to be honest. If you have any ideas, go ahead and drop them in the comments. In the meantime, uh, I'm not pleased with the, the way this looks. And so I am going to redust it and try again. Okay, it is not perfect, but it is so much better. Uh, I don't know why it happened. I'm still not sure why it's not perfectly fixed, although it's really hard for you to pick this up now. You can't really see it on here. So I'm much happier with it. I've got one of these Laurie Spray bottomless molds. This is gonna fit perfectly in there. I'm gonna turn this thing into a bowl. And here's the finished piece. I just love this beautiful color and the flow and the motion. Uh, this bowl is, I don't know, two inches, three inches deep. Um, really beautiful color. Looks like I need to clean the underside of that a little bit better, huh? <laughs> anyway, I just love to take multiple shots of these to show them off. Uh, hopefully I will find a buyer soon. I hope you enjoyed this and that you learned something. Please subscribe to the channel, drop me a comment, let me know what you thought, and uh, keep on fusing. Bye-bye.